Bonjour à tous. A French autocouffle episode here today with the new DS3 as a hatch, as the convertible, and the new DS performance with 210 horsepower. So we are going to cover all the different versions of this car here. It's a separate brand now. It was split off from Citroën with a lot of updates here and there in the exterior, interior and the driving experience. Petrol engine, diesel engine and the new top petrol engine. We have everything for you on this car here today and we're going to have a lot of fun with this premium French avant-garde. Let's go, nous commençons. Bleu Belle Ile, that's a special blue color and I like it when the blue color is very unique. Here it goes in a, you know, turquoise direction and the other color next to me is called Whisper. That's a gray tone here. And altogether there will be 78 color combinations from body color to roof. I'll show you in the side profile more about the roof color as well. What about the new front? You've seen here the Citroën badge is no more because they're establishing DS as a separate premium automotive brand. We've shown you that with the DS5 and DS4 already. Those reviews will also be linked in the video description. Also the DS3 world premiere from Paris where we were at the Louvre at the very impressive world premiere and had some great interviews as well. Here you see the front has been totally changed. It's a huge front grille now and with those called DS wings where the front grille is continued over to the headlights. Those are the DS wings and the logo changed obviously and tell me if you like this new design for the DS3 also comparing to the predecessor version. Let's start with the side profile in the hatch version. Basically you can spend about taking German prices as a reference 16,000 euros in the car up to 23,000 euros for the higher trim levels as it is here right now. Then also for example with 17 inch rims they are very beautiful in my opinion and 3,000 euros more for the convertible. We're going to take a look at that one very soon. The overall length, hatch or convertible, will always be 3.95 meters. So right below four meters. So very small car still, very suitable for the city. Really looking forward how much space it will offer inside, but the dimensions haven't changed. Overall, it's a big product update, not an all new car. What is very interesting here in this color combination, so I told you there are a lot of combinations available for the roof and also for the roof of the convertible. And that's the only thing I'm quite curious about is that the black part here, it seems to be some added foil, um, seems to be a little bit wrapped. I'm not sure how durable this will be. Looking forward how that one will turn out over the years. But for sure, this is one of the most spectacular cars in the small segment just because it's really so unique and they are really very joyful with the design. Look at this reverse shark fin or maybe it also looks like the upper air intake of a Formula 1 car. Very interesting, definitely. And in this special version here we also have some silhouette painting in here of the Grand Palais in Paris. And now to the rear of the car. They haven't changed so much. See the taillights, they look a little bit more modern now. And overall, I think they have managed it quite well that the car does look premium from the outside. It looks very modern, very unique, definitely, especially in this color combination here. The petrol engine has also two exhaust pipes here in the rear. And I also like very small details you can see here at the side part of the taillights. Very interesting, by the way, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. 
Just listen to the sound here. Do you hear the difference? This is metal. This is plastic and you can also see it here. You can push it right in. This is very soft and it's not necessarily bad. It's not that it's just in bad quality because the rear part in here can be damaged quite easily. Then it's also cheaper to replace it later on and it saves weight. And we switch to the side profile of the convertible. And now the question is, is it a real convertible? Some might say no, never ever. Others say, well, you can close and open the roof until 120 kilometers an hour, really. And you can also drive it all season. Maybe this is more convertible than anything else. I will leave it up to you guys. Fact is that in the side profile you hardly see that it's a convertible, especially when the roof is closed. So we have opened it already right now that you can see it. But from the side profile, not so much is changing. And now the convertible from the rear and there you can definitely see a difference. This is the lowest point the roof goes to, so the maximum possible and different roof cloth colors available as well, as I've told you. Now the question is, how can I access the trunk? And you might think, oh, you just have to go to the front, press the roof button there. No, you actually don't have to, because when you hit the trunk button at the lower part, it automatically moves up to this position, and then unlocks and you can open it. So overall, this is a very clever solution. But of course, there's still a huge difference in trunk between convertible and the hatch. We'll go and take a look at that now. And you can see it is really limited the space here. I can put my arm in here that you can approximately see. And the loading is also not that easy here. So this is definitely the big disadvantage of the convertible. Now with the hatch, there we have a true hatch opening. Well, the length is pretty much the same, but of course you have the easier access right here to the luggage area and it's pretty normal for a small car definitely not the best about this car but you can see there's enough for the daily shopping for example then we can also flip the seats I'll remove that cover here flipping the seats is the same in the convertible and in the hatch version you can do it from here it's on the top of the seats and then you don't have an even loading surface but you can lengthen the area and have more flexibility, definitely. Before we get inside, one last thing we can see already from the outside. It's called the Active City Brake. This is the emergency braking assistant. It is not from standard equipment. Please, DS engineers, do this. Maybe as a product update, that would be very great. Here you have to pick it optionally, or it's also included in the Sport Chick, the top trim level. This is a special DS key. It's different than those that you get for the Citroen. And if you open the car, also the side mirrors can flip out. Again, in the top trim. Let's open the door. And you see it's quite long because people should get in the rear. Closing sound, quite feasible, I think. So, and there it is. This is the optional genuine leather equipment. And, you know, I do not recommend that. But in the convertible, we will soon show you my favorite version so also stay tuned for that one we'll start with this first interior trim all in black and you see the seats have a very strong side support that we can see so far also seat heating is available right here in different levels you can switch it right there and also contrasting pedals in silver and a nice sporty steering wheel with a flattened end right here and it's very compact. It reminds us a little bit of those in the Peugeot 308. Now I'll get inside. 
and I immediately realize you see a lot of different forms and it looks very interesting. There's a lot to discover, definitely. But the seats, well, the form itself is quite comfortable, but not for my height. I'm 1 meters 86. Subscribers of Audible already know that. But here you more feel comfortable when you're like 170 uh, in meters because you see my, my knees they are very close to the steering wheel and I don't want to get you know more in, in the rear because then I would be too far away from the steering wheel and also I'm not really fitting in and on the seat so definitely I'm too big for this seat for this car overall a uh, headroom would still be given that's not the problem but the space on the seat I could slide a little bit more into the rear but then you see you shouldn't get too far from the steering wheel that you can still very well control it. You can adjust it a little bit to the front and also up and down. That is possible, but overall the DS3 is not a real good car for tall people. There are other small cars that are more suitable for taller people. This one not. But then again, if it's more set up for a little bit smaller people, they might feel better in here. So what about the interior build quality? You see there are certain materials being used, this, I think this should be level red then here, um, but overall you see the build quality is not super premium, but we are also not in high price region, so you shouldn't expect that maybe. Also when we continue on to the dashboard you see different styles and materials are used again that makes it very interesting, but also a little bit um, you know mixed. Also here I think that should be level red, this cover and very innovative design also for the instruments. We we'll soon take a detailed look to those as well. I can also turn on the ignition and there's also the new screen available. Details to those and to the connectivity also quite soon. And we have the silhouette of the Grand Palais again here at the dashboard side. And here again another cockpit overview. I like that they got some contrasts here but overall I think they are mixing too many different forms. Here again some round um, then a new display, uh, temperature style. Um, the quality of the buttons is okay, but also not super overwhelming. Let's take it that way. Manual shifting here with the petrol engine. We'll see it's different from the diesel engine. Where some more visual proof that the build quality needs some improvement here, where I can adjust the steering wheel, the lower part is quite sharp when I have my finger on that one. You see there I can adjust the steering wheel but then you can really easily hurt your fingers and this has to improve. But very nice again that we see some interesting structures on top of the dashboard as well as the uh, aforehand mentioned silhouette of the Grand Palais there. Those details are really making the experience interesting. The instruments with some interesting frames around it. I really like that. The only part I don't like is um, that for the right digital part you still have to press it here very old school to change, for example, the range information. So at the bottom here, it's placed very low, it's minus and plus for the volume and the button for the main menu. And there it is, the new bigger screen that is available right here now and you can click it through with the menu button or it's usually also by touch. And for example, you can also connect your Bluetooth telephone, that is possible. But we can also use the cable, I will soon show you. One short look at the GPS, which is well, not the most modern one. You see also the reaction times. Could be better, we're in Cologne here today. Beste Grüße an alle Kölner Zuschauer. Best greetings to all the viewers from Germany in Cologne. Um, so I'm overall not that satisfied with the visualization here, but basically you have everything you need. And then we'll plug in the iPhone with a cable um, next to the handbrake and let's see the USB slot. I'll remove my flight mode now and hope that won't cause any interferences. So let's see. Usually when you plug in the phone, CarPlay should automatically start. Here it does at the phone. Let's see, it doesn't pop out here yet. 
see if something will still be happening. It's active, obviously. And let's go to menu. Apple copy. Ah, oh, there it is. Great. Perfect. So that works very well, and you don't need an extra app. That's the best thing um, for that as well. And then you can um, listen to your music, for example. And um, ah, there you can go back, of course, and also use GPS, which is built in. Um, so that would also be a possibility then. Uh, but just remember, you always have to pay this mirror screen option. Always have to get it optional then. Not sure why it's not loading here right now. That might have something to do with my internet connection here because it's not that fast here right now. And, and Apple CarPlay is always connected with Siri, with the voice command, and of course Android Auto is also working with this vehicle, by the way. So and here, for example. Mit wem möchtest du sprechen? Michel Weigel. Meinst du Michel Weigel? Ja. Michel Weigel wird angerufen. So now I'm calling my cameraman and well, Hello, luckily his phone is not responding because he's at the moment filming, but works pretty well. Here again, by the way, next to the handbrake is a 12 volt power supply. And I was first searching for the USB port because here it just says, it says AUX, but beneath the AUX is the AUX in, but also the USB port there. So um, there I did find it to show you the CarPlay. Storage space at inside of the doors is quite slim, limited. Then the glove box, that one is really huge. So you have a lot of space in here, definitely. Then in the front, for example, for the mobile phone. Well, here I'm not sure you shouldn't put anything here because the handbrake goes down there. And the beverage holder right here, but that one seems a little bit too loose to really keep the beverage tight. Now let's see if I can get here in the rear. Seat is sliding to the front. And I'll squeeze in here. So, what is good that um, the middle seat is also relatively flat, so that leaves the possibility for three people. Headspace is, well, is limited. Um, touching my head with the ceiling with 186, so I have to crouch a little bit. But there are also some handles here, so if you go racing, you can hold on tight here. And see, if I would be driving like the seat was, um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, but we've tested it with one meter 70 and the according legs for that one, it does still fit with 186 in meters. No. And now we switch on to the convertible and this is my personal highlight for today because, well, maybe the DS executives listened to the stuff we had to say and they now also offer a Dynamica interior for the seats. It means Dynamica is one of the companies that are producing those microfiber seats and you get a mix here from a different cloth material and the Dynamica microfiber. It looks very beautiful, it feels very good, very high class feel definitely. And very important thing is when we are in the car with leather, especially when it's new, it really stinks like chemicals because, you know, when you use leather seats, you have to use a lot of chemicals and it's less natural than if you go for completely artificial seats because less chemicals are used. It's a strange thing, but it's the truth. And so, especially if you have uh, some allergies and you may be sensitive some, to some chemical smells, then definitely go for those seats here or from standard equipment, they are just plain cloth seats available as well. So think about that. And they also offer you a better seating comfort because they are way softer. And especially for the convertible, I would always go for them because in summertime now, you don't sweat on them that easily. And in winter times, they are not cold. You don't really need the seat heating. And seat heating is still available here for those seats, but you don't really need it. And now the convertible, I always love it really. And well, you don't have the side poles open here, but as the convertible roof is will be open all the way until the rear, it still already gives you this convertible feeling. So what is different here? Well, it's a different 
manual shifting lever because this one is the diesel engines quite soon and we got an armrest here i would go for that one some more space inside here for the mobile phone for example but then well well where can i find a good beverage holder that one is missing and before i forget it if you wonder what this is that is for the perfume you can use this for the interior and um, the right way comes even more you can put different scents in here it's a very funny system there it is you can put some replacement in there opening and closing of the roofs right here opening and closing and now let's close the roof see how long it takes and as i've said earlier it can go until the speed of 120 kilometers an hour now i have to press it again there are certain levels and so you can even open and close it on the autobahn that is definitely one big advantage oh no the sun is gone that's the next step then you have to hold it again so now you've seen the steps and now i'll make it as fast as possible here and i'm just holding it all the time now then when i'm just holding it it continues all the way until the back there it is i have to press it again and now there we go and we let the sun shine again now the engines let's start you with the turbo petrol engine this one here a 1.6 liter four cylinder with 165 horsepower the same one we'll also soon see in the ds performance with 210 horsepower and then on the petrol side there's also 1.2 liter available a smaller one a three cylinder with 80 110 or 130 horsepower the 110 is also able to be combined with the automatic gearbox a converter gearbox now and then let's move on to the diesel side because there's also a 1.6 liter diesel available we have in the other car here four cylinder as well and with 100 or 120 horsepower but in general i would really say if you go for such a car for a rather small car just go for the petrol engine now let's start our ride and one thing i have to criticize this sound is so annoying when you open the door and the key is still in lock oh, very annoying so i close the door and then let's start and i had to decide between driving the petrol one and with the hatch with the closed top and the diesel with the convertible well i wanted to drive a petrol car but i so wanted to drive a convertible well and you see what we ended up with the convertible of course but so we can tell you more about the diesel 1.6 liter diesel engine with 120 horsepower so the little bit stronger version you see the steering wheel here is quite easy to turn and it's a very short and tiny car and so when we're moving around very close to run we also had the rear view camera but when it's very bright it's hard to see the display of the rear view camera that's always good to have it so and we're starting with some exercise also for the suspension here we're on the famous Kopfsteinpflaster that's how we call in Germany when you have got some little stones on the street close to each other where, what you know how you built the streets maybe a hundred years ago so manual gearbox here six speed as well and we're also going to talk about how is it with driving with open top here and in the different stages let's see we now go to the final stage open it all the way and i mean we're in the city that's no problem of course if you want to reduce the wind inside you can always raise the windows up as we have it here right now for our camera so and we also will test the GPS for you so we can also tell you how that one reacts see when we're here in, in si narrow city surrounding it's always good to have a rather small car it's really hard to see the display here especially when the Sun is shi shining in so well that is one disadvantage of those design displays which are not kind of hidden inside but very flat on the surface that they then again cannot see it 
that well. But we also listen to the voice commands and see um, how far we go here on our testing route. I really like to drive with the open top here. And the special thing about this very convertible is that you feel safe on the one hand because you still have the A, B and the closed pillar above that. But at the same time, you're open to the top. And so it's kind of a mix in between. Really. And you smell and also hear what's outside, of course. Let's see. Hope the traffic light will soon jump to green. And then we can also tell you something more about the engine. Seating position. As I said, it's generally not bad, but just for very tall people, I cannot recommend it. If you're not that tall, you'll be just fine with it because the seats as itself, they are pretty good and also have some nice forms here and especially here on the Colossus Mix Dynamica surface. This one is really good. So, steering wheel doesn't take a lot of effort to control. The steering is not very direct. You see I need some more steering angle, but again, very easy to steer. So that one is definitely also aimed for the city riding. It's very easy to drive inside the city. And most of the time this car will be used inside the city. And so you also should get used to just standing still in traffic. But we'll soon also get to a road where we can give the engine a little bit more power hitting the throttle and also can tell you something more about the consumption. You see, there's a lot of sun coming in here with the roof. So it's not too warm today, not too warm. Um, but I think it's kind of perfect convertible weather because if it's too hot, it's also not that good anymore because you're sweating all the time then. Ah, I just love riding in the convertible. And the good thing here is also that there are hardly any affordable convertibles anymore on the market and hardly any small convertibles. So it's also nice to have this one as an additional car just on the automotive market where there are not so many convertibles anymore. As for the sound insulation, well, we can tell you more about that later when we close the roof. We will test that one as well. Here, of course, when the top is open, we cannot talk so much about sound insulation. At least when it's open here, I also don't really hear it's, it's a diesel engine. Um, that's neglectable. What is special about this diesel engine? We have tested the Citroën diesels um, already so far. And it was, for example, very good that they are really very low on consumption. And I hardly often say that, that uh, certain engines are low on consumption, but Citroën diesels are really quite low on consumption. You can score some four liters on the 100 kilometers with them. That won't be a big problem. So I'll zoom the map a little bit more in. It all works via touch. And for city riding, this diesel here, perfectly fine. I mean, this 160 diesel offers you a lot of torque. So you will also be just fine on the motorway with that one, but more about that point here later. Shifting, well, you maybe also hear it. You do get some resistance when try to putting in the gears. Maybe that one is better better with the um, with the petrol engine here. It really also needs some, you know, uh, some giving of the throttle and clutch at the same time. Letting the clutch come giving throttle in and at that time it's sometimes easier to put put in the gear than here just when standing still and hitting the clutch oh, maybe they could work a little bit of the smoothness of the shifting here the steering wheel is a lot of fun because it's rather compact and so you also can control it very well it's definitely something different here and i would say We'll start again with another session of the driving when we can drive a little bit faster because city traffic is, of course, not the most exciting part. Now we're getting closer to the countryside and one thing I realized when looking in the back mirror, when you have the roof at the lowest point, you can't see anything through the back mirror because that one is clearly blocking it as also the rear window is lower then. And about the diesel engine here, the first gear is very, very short. So 
too little too short for me. So when you like about 10 kilometers, you already shift down, uh, shift up. Sorry, in the second gear. So in first gear, I would like to turn it a little bit higher. Anything else? The diesel is relatively calm and um, also gives you, you know, in, enough performance. For example, we can show you when I'm, for example, going second gear. I'm going to go 40 to 60. That's it, for example. So third gear now, let's say, oh, there's unlimited speed time, which means 100 on countryside roads in Germany. So third gear, 60 to 100. Let's see how this one performs with 120 horsepower diesel. Let's go now. And now 100. Now it gets really windy in here as we have it all open, but still, I mean, we have 20 degrees meanwhile and driving a 90 now, still comfortable. Let's see how that changes now. Put it one part up and now I can also look again through the rear window and I realized that the wind in the back head has reduced a little bit, but strangely, um, it doesn't make a huge difference and that might just because the wind flows to the rear anyway and um, that's kind of it. And now we're getting to another standstill. <laughs> but um, good thing to test and close the roof here once more. Let me tell you something about the insulation and also when we're driving. How is it here with the closed roof? Oh well, no, we have to close it. Just for testing purposes, of course. So... That's it now. Yeah, of course, in comparison now, it's relatively silent. We also raise the windows up. So let's also see if we can hear the diesel. Yeah, now we also hear the diesel a little bit better, but in general, it's quite good insulated as for the diesel side. I also turned down the vents that you can really listen to it. Yeah, the petrol engine is more silent, definitely, you, you do realize it. I mean, if you have had the car open before, then of course it's a difference, but if we compare it to other cars we've driven lately, now when some cars in the other direction are passing by here, um, it's not the car with the best insulation we've tested. Let's, let's take it that way. Other than that, I would really go for the convertible because it offers you so much more when you can always open that one, especially on, on a day like today. And now let's switch to the sport version, the DS Performance with 210 horsepower, the same 1.6 liter turbo petrol engine beneath that one, but with a little bit more horsepower and another setup and a little bit different from the suspension and the differential. Now to the details. In the front, the DS Performance offers the same new huge front grille as the other versions, but here we have a special DS Performance logo up there. A very strong red color called Rouge Odon we have here on the DS Performance and bigger alloys in the normal versions, 18 inch and they look very sporty. Remind me a little bit also of the Peugeot Sport models and the same will also soon account for parts of the interior, I can tell you black contrasting side mirrors as well as those black contrasts here at the wheel arches. Overall a very aggressive design of course and probably one of the most unique small sporty cars on the market there is right now and also just below four meters in length. And the rear was very clear looking taillights, another DS Performance logo two exhaust pipes that's not special same in the normal petrol engine versions 
well, it's basically the same engine, but we got a quite strong diffuser here for a small car. Now let's take a look inside of the DS Performance and the big difference to the normal versions is you get those special seats here. Wow, real racing seats with a lot of side support and really a great mix. We know that for example from the Peugeot Sport models, Dynamica or microfiber on the inside and also some other gloss and this really great racing style. Visually, they look great and I can pro promise you they are also very comfortable and sporty at the same time. More to that very soon. The steering wheel is basically the same and uh, well, you see the main difference is really the seats. Well, the floor mats, they have the DS Performance logo, but everything else is well, not so much different. You got the red background on the central instruments and of course more power boost. And I'll get inside. Well, you see the side of the seat that flips down a little bit. Um, kind of loose. Um, it's not really bad, but I wonder how will it be over time? How is the durability of that one? I hope it doesn't get too loose then. But then, when sitting here, you really feel very cozy and, you know, sporty, caged in at the same time. The funny thing is really also when comparing it to the normal models of the DS that here, although it is sportier, the seat offers more space for tall people. That's a strange thing, but good to know. So when you're taller, it's better to go for the sport racing seats here with the DS performance. Quite interesting finding here and that's why it's also way better for me to sit here, definitely. So with the other, with the normal versions, I would rather say not really recommendable for tall people here. I think it's less of a problem. Very interesting. General cockpit overview. We see a lot of different forms here as well in the DS performance version. The perfume spender is also in here. Maybe if you want to have a good smell when racing. Also a mix of different materials, the leather red here on the top, then structure on the dashboard from plastic, but it's kind of a wave structure if you look in that direction. And some racing stripes, they're just wrapped on here on the black plastic, shiny, glossy stuff. And overall, I think it's not too different from the normal DS versions. It already looks kind of that way, really the seats are the main difference. The infotainment screen, there's also the new one here in this new DS version. If you maybe know it from the old Citroen DS version, it was a little bit different, a little bit smaller. And um, this is the GPS here as well. And they have updated that one. Um, you could go to the menu, the button below there. And in the menu, you can either, for example, connect the telephone via Bluetooth or there's also an option to go for the Apple CarPlay. Basically accounts for all of the models. You can pick the same options. And of course, this one here is also available as a convertible. And another close look at those racing style instruments. It's kind of aluminum style on the outside and then red on the inside. In the DS Performance version, you have the same storage spaces as well. Inside the doors, quite slim. Then the glove box is very huge. Front of the gear shifter is a little space as well as USB and 12 volt power supply here and some beverage holder right there. And now it is the question what have I do and space in the rear with those racing seats? Are they better or worse for the space I have behind here? And well, it was a problem before in the normal versions and here it's even worse, yeah, because the seats are really huge, so they reduce, well, I cannot sit at all here, but headspace-wise, okay, I would, it would work, but here yeah, I can even put the seat, like I can't even fix it with my knees here. So you have to remember when you go for the racing version, 
you should only go with very tiny people in the rear. However, you don't lose any space in the trunk. Now also as an example here, when a suitcase is right in there, how big it is, that you can imagine it. So let's go for a short test run with the DS3 Performance. Total petrol engine 1.6 liters displacement, 210 horsepower or 208 to be very exact, but you know, always derives, uh, derives a little bit anyway. So some 50 horsepower more than with the other strong version. And oh, uh, we've already realized right now the suspension is really way stiffer that makes a difference and here in the roundabout test now you feel you get better connection to the road you see there's hardly any curve tilting so you also have a lot of riding fun and the sport is also quite sound <laughs> that's a nice one the sound is already quite sporty as well you also heard that from the outside so there is still a difference, of course, here to the performance version than to the 165 horsepower petrol engine. However, it's not a completely different engine, therefore you shouldn't also expect anyone else. But, but I mean, it's a small and quite light car, uh, and therefore you also don't need those huge engines um, that works pretty fine then. So, so stop and go then here as well. The steering wheel could be a little bit stiffer, I think, for a sporty car. Let's do that roundabout test once more with some higher speed and also some slalom style. Yeah, that works pretty well, I would say. Also, I have a better impression than with the normal versions of the DS3. But you have to be sure, I mean, it, you also lose a little bit of comfort of course if we're pushing it front wheels we get a little bit of understeering I feel that but really a lot of fun and at the same time well the suspension is less comfortable yes but as the seats offer more comfort for tall drivers it's maybe maybe not a wrong choice to go to then so that's also really interesting good acceleration Shifting is also better than with the diesel engine, definitely. With the diesel engine, the manual shifting process was sometimes a little bit harsh. A lot of resistance here with the petrol engine. It feels better, definitely. So we get out here. And let's show you some acceleration. For example, from 30 to 70 in the second gear down to 30 now and let's go now and that's it so I think acceptable performance really a fun small car where you have this unique styling on the exterior and on the interior well there are other small cars that are maybe more refined in the interior but at the same time maybe a little bit boring probably uh, but you know this one offers definitely a very special mix 208 GTI would be from the corporation side from the PSA Peugeot Citroen so you could also compare that one of course so you know unlimited speed to 100 so one more acceleration figure let's say third gear from 70 to 100 let's go with now and done you see even reasonable here and now with 100 well it gets a little bit loud here so not the best insulation but you get a good feeling from the steering wheel then to the to the road here even at some higher speeds and the shifting is really fun as well so if you're searching for some really fun small car why not and extra price for that one here's 27,000 euros depending on which extras you pick but about three to four thousand euros extra 
from the very top version there is at all and um, that is still okay considering and now it's, it's getting very slow still got a small car we get along also in narrow regions and inside the city the steering gets very light then when you're at slower speeds so you don't need much power to get a get around that one and so you can still have that one here as a small everyday car that is no problem we leave bicycles in the front come on no he wants us to drive <laughs> for example you know there's like a, a mini roundabout here and with some bigger cars let's imagine i would be even with a mid-sized sport car here i would already get annoyed here got the rear view camera oh they've improved the resolution that's good but here with, with a very small car it's no problem so there are always advantages also to the smaller cars that you can combine something more with them besides <laughs> you cannot combine the rear passenger part as we've shown you earlier so one more acceleration here from first gear as we are starting here right now front wheels maybe will, will they spin let's see no I felt it at the steering wheel when you push the throttle really hard you have to hold tight because the wheels give you a little bit spin but they have really very well worked with the differential as well that is special here about the performance version and that is also limiting too much wheel spin at least on dry roads I think it will be a different pair of shoes than on the wet road there we will have more problems with that definitely but here on the dry road no problems whatsoever in the past we've also had powerful front wheel driven cars where it was more of a problem but here i think they solved it quite well so overall yeah this some kind of special car definitely and now to our conclusion the new ds3 new front grille a little bit more of the styling updated headlights a few changes here and then more color combinations interior new seat surfaces which i really like and there will also be new textures awaiting in the ds world they are also experimenting with stone for example that one will be very exciting and i hope they won't more move to this you know so-called oh it's fine leather direction because that is to that is the old luxury they should really focus on the new sustainable luxury well, we've seen a lot of different variants here, the convertible, also the performance version. I was really keen on that petrol engine, it really felt very, feel, felt very good. The sport seats here are a better choice for tall people. The normal seats are not very good if you're taller, so I have some space problems when sitting in there, I've told you that one. But I mean, I'm also maybe not the main target group of this car then. In the rear there's also not so much space there are also better small cars also the interior refinement needs some more tweaking at ds but i think they've already shown us some of very nice details where they can head to and i think it is already quite promising i want to hear your feedback of course on the different versions which one would you go for hatch convertible performance maybe normal petrol diesel performance as convertible performance as hatch Put me that one in the comments and I hope you have enjoyed today's episode with us together here. We'll see each other on the next Auto Gefühl episode. Join us for more, of course, and keep supporting us. Thanks and bye.